Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina and this is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing. Welcome if it's your first time here and if you're always coming to view, welcome back. I'm happy that you're here. Today I want to share with you a special dress. It's a pattern test of a pattern that's already in existence, it's not a brand new pattern. Um, Gabriella from Chalk and Notch has been working on extending the size range to her patterns and she's already done that to the fringe dress and I was a part of that test too. So now it's the Orchid Midi. If you look at the hashtag Orchid Midi on Instagram, you will see many, many of these dresses already out there. Um, but you know, she did want to update the pattern and I think that's amazing. So, you know, the pattern can work for more people. The features of this dress is that it's a wrap bodice and the bodice pieces front and back have slight gathers into front and back yokes. That is attached to an A-line skirt that hits mid-calf around midi length and has a center front slit that's finished with mitered corners. And then to bring it in at the waist, you have a casing around the dress on the outside with a tie inside with a partial elastic as well. There are two views and the difference between them is basically the sleeves. View A has a flatter sleeve and view B has the long sleeve with an elastic. This pattern is designed for light to medium weight wovens, uh, flowy fabrics, especially for view A if you're using the flatter sleeves, you don't want any stiff like flutters poking out like that. In my case, I chose chiffon. It is a lightweight woven, so although it's not mentioned, it does fit into the build. The sizing now comes from size zero to 24 US with a bust of 30 inches to 48 inches and hips of 35 inches to 53 inches. And there are two bodice options. One that is for A and B cups that does not have side bust starts and the other bodice is for the CD cup sizes and that one has side bust starts. This is not a fitted design. There is ease around everywhere and at the bust there's about five inches of ease and at the hips about seven inches of positive ease. In my case, I just made a straight size 14. That's where my measurements hit and that's the dress that I made. In the up close and so personal, what you're going to see first is a good look at my fabric before it became a dress. And this is one of my oldest, most precious fabrics ever from my stash. Uh, probably bought it in 2010 in New Zealand and I've been traveling with it like from country to country, you know, because that's my life. <laughs> but it was a perfect match for this pattern. I love this fabric. And then sewing wise, you're going to see all about construction um, in the bodice area, the neckline binding and the clean finishes for the yokes front and back. So let's hop into up close and sew personal. This is one of my oldest fabrics from New Zealand, super precious chiffon in snake print and I took the chance, made the dress out of this one, I love it. You're looking at the back bodice piece here that's cut on the fold and there's a notch there and a notch there where you do slight gathering there so that's already been done. And then you have your yoke that I have to do in contrast because I didn't have enough fabric. So that was placed right sides together like that. And I have already run a stitch right there with a 3 8 seam allowance, so that's already been done. Now for the other yoke, um, the one that's going to go inside, I did it from the main fabric from this, but it's got a seam in the middle. So I really didn't want to use this on the outside, so I left it inside. This one has been interfaced. I use a very lightweight interfacing. And then I've got these right sides together. So I've pinned that and I'm gonna do a stitch right there and that's gonna close off the neckline. So I've done that stitch, I have clipped there and then I have also understitched right there. Now I've done that because I'm using contrast fabric and I don't want anything from the inside to be seen on the outside. So um, this internal yoke, or it's also called the facing on the pattern, is gonna be nicely tucked in there and all you're gonna see is the black yoke. Now, when you turn this around, you still have this flapping around that needs to be sewn into there. So I'm gonna have to go in there, flip this around, like put all of this inside there. So I flipped my top, <laughs> this is the bodice here, here's the yoke and here's the internal yoke. I'm gonna get everything here and roll it up and put it in there, inside. Now this is a burrito. And now everything is tucked in there, as you can see. 
and I'm going to sew right there and then flip it around again. Sewing the seam there, I have uh, the two yokes sandwiching the back piece of the bodice and you can see I have already a stitching line there. I'm trying to just sew just over it so it's not going to be vis visible on the outside. So then after you've done this straight uh, seam, you take it out and you have this little weird thing and then you have fabric in there which is your back bodice piece. So you just have to get it out of that little roll and then magically you can have clean finish on your yoke on the neckline as you can see and on the back yoke and the inner yoke everything is enclosed all the gathering bit is inside both yokes as you can see. I have two bodice pieces here for the front as you can see I've also done contrast front yoke with black there on both sides I have sewn the side bust that say on both sides and here you'll find two little notches where you gather in this light gathering there into the yoke. This yoke is in a single layer so there is a seam there and I've pressed the seam up. Now I was very careful as the instructions say to stay stitched this area. This is a piece that is diagonal you know because it wraps over it's cut on the bias part of the fabric so it could stretch out. So you have to be really careful to manipulate this area there. So um, the pattern had you do a strip of um, like a, like tape that was cut on the bias out of the main fabric but I do not have enough so I'm going to use my sudden bias binding to have the same effect. I'm going to sort out this binding, sew it on, turn it around, understitch it and then sew it again on, this, on the top. Here we go, the pattern called for you to make a band out of the own uh, fabric and I would have done that if I'd had enough. The satin bias tape is fine. I'm using a 3-8 seam allowance as you can see there as the pattern calls for. Once I've sewn that onto each of the two front bodices, I want to reduce the bulk so I'm going to trim that seam allowance down to half. Then comes the under stitching and I use my edge foot. My edge foot gives me a really nice straight stitch without having to worry so much about it being straight or going wonky so I go I take my time and do that really nice and accurate the seam allowance is tucked in underneath the bias tape you know so that it, it'll flip in and not come out you know in any way shape or form after doing the under stitching um, I'm going to go ahead and fold that tape you know to the, towards the inside of the bodice and I'm going to pop a few pins now the pins I use for these projects are special, they are sharp, they are new, I don't want to damage my chiffon. Pin that in and baste that on. Hand basting, I never regret it. It always gives me such better results. And then I can go and sew without having to worry about pins and everything. So I do that. And then I go, you know, sewing on the top. I'm using a 5.8 seam allowance to be able to catch all that bias tape. And I take my time, go really nice and slow and sew really nice and straight so that this can be really accurate. Now my basting stitch was not on that same seam allowance, it's a few millimeters off so I'm not sewing on it. When it comes time to pull out the basting stitch it will just fly right off. And then I have two rows of really neat stitching for my neckline binding. Here you can see the front, one of the sides of the bodice. Here is the front yoke, the smaller one, and it's been enclosed into the shoulder seam and the double yoke that we have on the back. If you can see there, it's all neat and clean everywhere on the neckline as well. So I'm going to show you how to do that on the other side. I have my front piece there and my back right sides together. And now I have two yokes, right? The external one and the internal one that's been interfaced, as you can see there. So you open this, you know, it's been attached there and that is closing that neckline. And so I had to undo about five eighths of an inch of the under stitching I'd done there so that this seam here is nice and free. So I've got this seam that has the binding right up to that stitch line there. You need to do a basting stitch there to hold that in place. But I'm going to skip the basting stitch, <laughs> pretend it's already been done. So basically you have this open like this and you're going to sandwich that front yoke in between there. You see I've sandwiched it through and now I've got to keep this pin in place there so that that front yoke is right on the edge of that stitch line and 
I'm going to put my pins and then um, once I've pinned this um, I take it to the sewing machine and do one stitch on this shoulder seam at 3 8 of an inch which is the seam allowance for the whole dress so there from there I'm going to start sewing from there to have it really precise there from there to there sew and that is it then we flip it around and it's magic it's done I've actually flipped the pins to the other side so it's easier to sew so I'm going to start sewing there at where the neckline is you can see the clip marks there and I'm going to start sewing with a 3 8 seam allowance all the way to the arm side to the other bit of this seam it's a very short seam just your shoulder seam removing the pins as I go I am a pin person I do use them <laughs> And then once you've done that, you want to clip that little bulk there at the neckline. Just do a little slanty cut there and then you're ready to flip it around and you're done. When you do this, your shoulder seam is enclosed between the two yokes, the front and the back yoke. And see how nice and clean and neat. Perfect. No raw edges anyway. Here's my dress. You clearly saw I didn't have enough fabric for the yokes. <laughs> I did Tetris. I basically needed about 30 more centimeters to get you know the yoke pieces onto my fabric but I couldn't go back to New Zealand and find the fabric I bought nine years ago <laughs> so I think the contrast looks good with black um, the black actually is a bit uh, heavier weight than the chiffon this is a crepe they are both lightweight but this is a bit heavier than the chiffon I think it's good for the yoke to have a bit more structure um, in my opinion <laughs> I did have enough to cut one yoke piece from the main, but there's a seam in the middle and I really didn't want to have a seam on the visible bit there. So it's inside tucked away where only I shall know about it. The casing I also did in the contrast crepe, you can see there, and I managed to squeak some ties out of the main fabric. Now uh, this is partially elastic inside, so maybe the elastic starts there and goes around. So um, you tie it in, but the elastic will never be seen, only the fabric ties, you know? The length is longer than what I'm used to and there's a little slit there, <laughs> mitered corners right there to finish nice and crisp. The sleeves were super easy to set in because there is a designed gathering bit there, very slight, not huge puffy at all, but there are notches where you gather in between so actually setting in the sleeve it turns out really really easy. Okay so getting a full view of me is very difficult. <laughs> Um, you can see the length there is mid shin, sort of midi. I did shorten the skirt by two inches out of personal preference there. And you can see how flowy this style is. Super flowy and well the fabric choice helps. Here's another view of the dress. Super nice and flowy. The slit hits right above the knee there. Very modest and it just flows beautifully. Now up closer, here is the casing here. And here is my tie. There is an elastic up to a point here and then it's just the fabric. The sleeves drape beautifully with that little elastic in there. It's not tight at all. And then at the bodice you can see it's nice and roomy. The wrap is nice and modest here. And the yokes look really nice. The gathering around here is very slight. Same as at the back. There's some gathering there from the yoke. Super feminine, super nice. What I wanted to tell you was the slight changes I made to my dress and the only modification I had to do for fit was to modify the bust dart. And I would be very worried if a pattern had a dart that fit me perfect because my bust apex is lower than the standard. For me, I always have to lower it or sometimes just redirect it and shorten it a little bit. So I had to drop mine and shorten it by I think a half inch so that it wouldn't like reach my apex, you know? Other than that, I made the pattern like nothing else. Nothing else was modified, except for the fact that I didn't put pockets. <laughs> but you probably know by now, pockets are not my friends. I don't think this fabric is very light chiffon. I don't think pockets would have been a good option for uh, my choice of fabrics. I also hand hemmed the bottom and the slit. I didn't really want any like machine stitching on this type of fabric. So those are just light construction modifications made due to the choice of fabric. Um, but they don't affect really the, the visual part of the dress, you know what I mean? So I wanted to share my journey in stepping out of my comfort zone. I showed you a maxi skirt the other day, now I'm showing you a midi skirt. 
<laughs> the orchid midi is on sale for one week 20 percent off for the re-release the re-update so if you like this style want to get the pattern um there is a link in the description box to the pattern company it's not an affiliate link so i'm not like getting any commission for this i just really like the dress and wanted to show it to you thank you so much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share and i will see you very soon bye Yeah.